everyone. Welcome to the Mahadev. Do not associate with the evil. Do associate with those who are wise and those who are of quality, quality in virtue, so that they will definitely elevate you. So this from Dhammapada. So today as well we meet with Dhammapada, the knowledge discussion and uh, we thought of inviting someone who is uh, already known to you uh, to conduct this discussion, to carry on this, this discussion. So although he is known to you, uh, let me introduce him to you once again and especially for the new weavers of the Mahadaya, he is none other than Mr. Vipula Vanigasekara, former diplomatic officer, lecturer in tourism and marketing attached to Sri Lanka tourism and he is also the proud author of Pointers to Enlightenment. So we warmly welcome you uh, to the Mahadaya. And, um, as the first question I, I thought of asking, you know, uh, people have a tendency to think that Buddhism or let me call it Dhamma, that Dhamma is not that easy to understand. Dhamma is uh, difficult to understand. So even Lord Buddha, if you just read the story, even uh, Lord Buddha himself, uh, when he attained uh, Nibbana, when he attained uh, enlightenment, uh, he's supposed to have thought that uh, it is difficult for people to understand uh, his doctrine. So uh, although uh, he uh, decided to preach the Dhamma later, what is your opinion on this? Do you think that Dhamma is actually difficult to understand? Um. Which is pretty obvious because when Buddha reached enlightenment, the first thought that came into his mind was whether the people would be in a position to understand this philosophy. Firstly, because uh, as Lord Buddha repeatedly said, you know, he is teaching only one thing that is suffering and way out of suffering. If there is anyone who doesn't understand the true meaning of suffering, mm -hmm. there will not be an inclination for them to go in search of a way out of suffering. Now, when I say suffering, which is a fairly uh, strong word, a fairly uh, a heavy word, but suffering encompasses everything from worries to anxiety to stress, uh, anger, hatred, all that. It's all yeah. suffering. Mm -hmm. Now, when Lord Buddha says suffering is a cardinal truth in life. Uh, one needs to analyze this and see whether it is really true. When Buddha himself says it's a cardinal truth. Now, throughout your life, if you try to ascertain this, whatever that is related to suffering, whatever that you recognize as pleasure, Mm -hmm. or or anything, you know, happiness mm -hmm. is in reality a kind of a pause in which there is absence of suffering. But immediately afterward the suffering arises. Yeah. So if you really see this happening, then you are really ready to listen to something which would enlighten you towards this uh, coming out of suffering. So that's one reason why Lord Buddha himself thought this might be a difficult task. The second reason is the openness of the people. How open are you to a, a new philosophy which will probably contradict all the beliefs that you were indulged in before? Mm -hmm. And that was another reason, because everyone has an opinion, concept, you know, with which you carry on your life with. And then here comes a philosophy which converts everything upside down, you know, which challenges everything that you believed in before. So that was another reason why Lord Buddha himself thought this might be a, a mission impossible, so to say, at the beginning. But nevertheless, he went on. 
and and it is the subtlety it's you know one might probably call it the depth of mm -hmm. dhamma but it, more than that i would say it's a subtlety because it challenges the very belief of existence the belief of the people in existence mm -hmm. and you are encouraged to look at life from a different perspective and yeah. then probably your experience afterwards would be different to what you believed in before so that mm -hmm. was the reason and and i think it is not only during lord buddha's time even now it's it's the same thing uh the difference between realization and belief mm -hmm. and 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 as you think also the reluctance to uh, um understand or rather believe something new or to grasp something new and and to and to ascertain whether there is any sense in that because mm -hmm. you are very comfortable that is how you see our minds are geared to to do two things one is you seek you seek your mm -hmm. seek so you think this moment is not not patient you have to go to the next moment because mm -hmm. next moment is better than this moment the other function of the mind is you resist mm -hmm. so you always resist so in between here comes the dhamma mm -hmm. and the mind doesn't allow you to accept or, or, or surrender to any philosophy because mm -hmm. you are too busy with seeking and resisting yeah with the self of course mm -hmm. you know with the excessive indulgence in mm -hmm. self so that is why um, it is believed that you know you know this conveying this message is a difficult task to people who are already having their own opinions and mm -hmm. concepts yeah and especially because of the subtleness as you explained exactly yeah and and remember after all lord yeah. buddha went on a long journey mm -hmm. he he learned so many things from so many teachers and and even went on to uh, performing self mortification and you know without having food and for years and suffered and suffered mm -hmm. and suffered and he found no this is not the way there there's another way out and and no one knows the the period in which this truth really clicked you mm -hmm. know and once that was done it was it was he was free mm -hmm. and that is the freedom that lord buddha wanted to convey mm -hmm. but the point is that uh, there is somehow um, the notion that you have to go through a long journey to achieve that mm -hmm. and whether it is right or wrong it depends on each individual yeah definitely uh now so when you uh, consider the buddha's preachings uh, the buddha's uh, discourses of dhamma he often he very often used uh, similes and parables and sometimes even props uh, whenever he preached uh, not to one or two but to large audiences so uh, why do you think that he used uh, all those similes and parables it was there a special reason for him yeah. to do so yeah the metaphors the examples yeah. uh, this is why i also titled my book mm -hmm. pointers to enlightenment because it contains some of these parables and similes that lord buddha had given okay uh the reason being that the language belongs to your mind mm -hmm. and the language is there to express what the mind is experiencing mm -hmm. and here one is in the search of something which is you may call mind or you may call beneath the mind mm -hmm. so the language becomes somewhat ineffective when it comes to conveying dhamma mm -hmm. so the best way to get this interest in people or to ignite interest in the people is to offer them an example so that triggers some kind of an analysis within you and then you turn you turn to this search and and see whether there is any any you know you continue to what shall i say it says you you continue to analyze it until the realization occurs mm -hmm. so offering parable, parables uh, was found to be the most effective way and for instance lord buddha said in the sky there is no distinction uh such as east west uh, north south yeah right mm -hmm. but the people through their minds have created all the differences 
and sure. then and 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 leading a mind driven life you mm-hmm. know that's one paragraph and i remember in this uh, story where this ma gandhi's uh, uh, father was trying to propose uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and ma gandhi's mother was also there and ma gandhi's father tried to introduce and uh, this is uh, my daughter so pretty and this is uh, no when when i think the when both ladies were present the uh, lord buddha asked which one is your daughter you know mm-hmm. and then i think magandhi's father said you know obviously this the, the prettiest lady so buddha said uh, i don't see any difference you know which mm-hmm. is a very effective parable and magandhi's father immediately understood mm-hmm. that for lord buddha it, it's just an age difference there is nothing mm-hmm. so there are there are thousands and thousands of parables that he had given throughout you know the the time factor don't live in the past don't live in the future all you have is this moment you know uh so he went on to use lot of similes so that he felt that it it is a very effective way of um you know another lady i think is agotami or patachara go and find out from a single house where they have not experienced a death mm. or something so kisa agotami exactly so mm. uh that's a way to uh open the door uh to investigate towards mm-hmm. finding the truth mm-hmm. so that is why most of the so use instead of using the direct language because the direct language is a mind driven thing because it is the well order it is the social order that is what the mind tells us to do but this is something definitely mm-hmm. beyond mind and as you said uh, the direct language uh, might be understood by uh, various people in various ways if it is a language that is used it is interpreted in different interpreted, ways and, and yes. even you can see today in so many sermons so many mm. discourses you can find that each person interprets it in in, in its uh, own way so people tend to grasp it uh in 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 toto the way yeah. the language is presenting but if it is a parable if it is a example you tend yeah. to do this analysis yourself after all it is a self realization you can't give this as a knowledge to another mm-hmm. person in which case it would have been an easy task you know it's a knowledge based thing mm-hmm. but this is not you know like becoming a doctor or an engineer mm-hmm. this is being the true nature of life the the the, the truth as what it is, is truth. life as it is yes yes so the yatha bhuta jnane yes <laughs> yes uh so i think uh, that uh, leads uh, me into my next question because you just happened to say people interpret the same dhamma in different ways in various ways and uh, when you see uh, when you you do come across various scholars and various teachers you know uh, who uh, give uh, Uh, different versions of the same dhamma so how do you think one can reconcile with that it is entirely up to you it is perfectly in order for you to be open to all the versions mm-hmm. but finally the analysis should take place within you mm-hmm. and that's why i said it is very very subtle and you need to untie this knot it's like a magician you know it's uh, i must tell you this you know the other day someone presented this magic on the book okay and the magic is that there are six cards and you are asked to remember one card mm-hmm. and then press a button yeah. and the computer will tell you the card that you remembered out of six mm-hmm. and indeed it does now now that's a magic obviously mm-hmm. but now now when this was presented to me and the first thing is that this cannot be true yeah. which is obviously this is a magic so this is not true so when you start with that kind of a footing when you start when you approach the question this cannot be true then it is much easier rather than you know getting caught to the magic and then you are trying to find the find the the solution how they did it mm-hmm. actually what happens is that the card that you have chosen the computer doesn't show you that card but it hides that card and then presents the rest of the cards and say look your card is missing mm-hmm. so it's a trick so this whole thing is a trick so that's why 
like the subtlety is explained by way of saying that life is like a dream mm -hmm. because when you when you are in the dream you are a character in the dream everything is real everything that happens in a dream is real and we refuse to believe if someone says this is also a dream how can that be you know we have a life we have a story and it's the only difference being that there seems to be there appears to be a continuity mm -hmm. uh, but if you really analyze it what you were yesterday is is not you who is today so yeah i mm -hmm. would like you to elaborate on that because you just said life is a dream and uh, i'm sure i'm sure some of our viewers must be wondering how can you say it's a dream well it is an example mm -hmm. you know, we, we we don't want to replicate you know the dream mm -hmm. into this life but it is just another parable you mm -hmm. know how come when you are dreaming mm -hmm. if everything is real mm -hmm. now here in this life also we think everything is real yeah is there another awakening from this for instance mm -hmm. if 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 you look, if you look at anatta lakkana sutra for example which mm -hmm. says that there is no self mm -hmm. which is a very hard hitting statement that there is no self mm -hmm. it virtually uh, makes you drop everything that you believed as to who you were and mm -hmm. what you were mm -hmm. if there is no self then who is experiencing all this and so similarly if someone says if there is no self and if there is no sufferer and it's only suffering and if you are able to see that if you are able to realize that all what you believed in this as a life story yeah and leave that aside it's a story it's it's because you have two things your story and yourself when your self collapses story also collapses so then what yeah. what is left mm -hmm. what is left and how can you possibly describe what is left you see and the only thing perhaps that might get closer to the description of that situation would be freedom mm -hmm. there's no sufferer okay and something seems to be happening and 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 no one wants to know what it is big buddha himself said you know like a in chula palakkavadi don't find out you know then it is you are gathering knowledge you will go on and on and on but uh, it is of no use but find out who you are and what you are and that will resolve mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. so therefore um, i would say uh, you know this 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 a very effective example that now if you walk out of this temple you might see people walking about when you look at them you will see cars you will see children you will see and what is the impression you probably have mm -hmm. it's virtually it gives you no impression you can see some movements of people yeah. you are you are absolutely no concern of what is happening out there but then if you see me you might look at me and say hello or if you see your or family members then mm -hmm. your attention will be more yeah now what makes the difference so that's the way to go that's the way to look at things and how come this person is close to the other person whom i have never seen is no person to me the attachment uh, that's what you mean yes yeah, there is a the attachment yes and then you go even further mm -hmm. clinging attachment yes that is the but then what is beneath that you see mm -hmm. so everything revolves around this me meanness mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. so in in that sense you know all these you know like a deep sleep you know when you are when you are in a deep sleep everything comes to a, mm -hmm. a, a stand still you know yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. because no no dreams nothing mm -hmm. but i don't want to use the word you know the deep sleep but the, but the dream is a better example mm -hmm. because because in a dream everything is real you shout you suffer you 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 get hurt you know all that happens in a dream and everything is real at that time and people refuse refuse even to to at least uh see the possibility of this being another dream like Mm, definitely and uh, so once again i think uh, now you happen to uh, just tell our viewers that uh, you know uh, when uh, various scholars 
or various teachers have their own versions or preach their own versions of Dhamma, the reconciling process, I mean, you said it's, it's up to the listener. It's up to the person who um, is uh, listening or viewing uh, or perhaps reading uh, that uh, particular version. Uh, but then again, even though, uh, as you said, you uh, you can you can have an open mind without just being attached in uh, what you call a magic of one person, a magic performed by one person. But uh, don't you think if you go on listening to several people and if they have uh, various versions, even though you are open-minded, but can't you end up being confused? Because the Buddha is not alive and uh, it, it, it might be confusing. Uh, I would probably say it's, it's rather than being confused, mm -hmm. you become probably an expert in Dhamma. You know, you can, you can display, you know, you can, you can become an expert in, in uh, displaying, displaying your, your ability to describe, uh, you know, after all, 22,000 sutras, the Abhidhammas and, and Dhammapadas, you know, if you remember most of these things through with the help of most of these sermons, you become an expert in Dhamma. But what is the use? You know, apart from being confused yourself, yeah. and and you love to speak on a lot of things and, and use a lot of Pali and, and, and show the people that you are an expert in Dhamma. Mm -hmm. But it's not helping anyone at the end, you know. Uh, this is why, you know, like if you, if you look at uh, Bahya Sutra, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, how much did Lord Buddha say to the to the person you know who was searching uh, for the truth? And he said, if you if you see something, you have only seen it. If you hear something, you have only heard it. If 